Huh? The Matt oh, Nottington sorry. inspiration. Yeah. Those are fantastic. I wish they weren't handwritten, but <laughs> they, Why they're fantastic. They just print it? <laughs> they're so good. Yeah. Um, does it have anything?
anything to do with the graduation ceremony. No winter, right? No winter? No. Okay. So, okay. Um, okay. Keep going until you, see a, until you see a Lake or Moderado, which is a Brandenburg three. Yes. About seven, like, you'll, you'll, you'll eventually come to it. Okay, got it. We're not playing the very last bar. Which, 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 which did you park, Marty? Sorry? Where did you want out parking? My wife drove me. We oh, only okay. live about 15 minutes away from here. Oh, okay, so that was very it. smart. So, yeah, it worked out too. She she was teaching at noon, so she dropped me off at, at about 11:30, and yeah. she'll come pick me up afterwards. Yeah, this usually go. They start at 1:30s. You two two hours, two hours, 15 minutes. Normally, so you have no don't control. Sure. Okay. Phone number, right? <laughs>
this. Yeah, you yeah. got it. Thank yeah, you. Yeah. That's the same, yeah. Oh, Nate, it's really okay. amplified. I think everything we say. Yes. It's amplified. Eight. Um.
No. ASL? No, that's even worse. Something about this. Oh, you can do that version of results. Okay. That version of results. Next. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> All three feet, okay? <clears throat> Should be, uh, let's see, page seven. You guys have a page turn or something like that. I have a page, I have, I have, I have a double bar of a page turn. Do you guys have anything? Oh, yes. Yeah. You can turn page, page seven. Why do you find it? Oh, I should, it's not page seven, a, I guess. Whatever. Well, yeah, yeah. Sorry. That's fine. Let's just do. Let's repeat the first part, then we can all turn pages. Do you have a page turn? Do you have a page I turn? do at just after F. Okay. Yeah. 90, 91. Yeah. Okay. I, I have a, a measure rest, though. I, I should be able to get it. Figure out. I mean, no, I, you can turn the page, yeah. right? Yes. I have a page I have turn. A, uh, yeah, mine's like the word. Uh, the, you figure out. Okay. But we'll, we'll do the first part twice, basically. Is that a problem? Uh, where, where will we repeat? Uh, we'll repeat ab is right D. 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 Okay, that, yes. D. D. D will repeat yeah, back we'll again. The, then, just then, the first. at that point, I'll turn my page. So we'll just take it away. It's okay. <laughs> okay. Oh, you have a page turn at D? Yeah. Oh, okay. Just, I'll stop, okay? Three, four. <laughs> Thank you. 
Take all the repeats from BC. Go from no, we're on the back, yeah. Okay. Sorry, I need a second. Thank you. 
with bad page turns. I don't know if I can play this one. The next one. I think we all have the same bad page turn. So I want you to skip this. <laughs> yeah. Okay. There's lots of other things in this book, right? The same thing. This is this Rondo can do. How about thirteen. Okay. It's a little bit different. Thirteen. Yeah. Yeah. Okay.
Dante. We could. It's all right. It's not too bad. Oh, actually, the Allegro is good. Okay. It's number 19. Nin 19. <coughs> yeah, 19. Thank <laughs> you. 
of Atlanta's John Marshall Law School. Entering the platform party and distinguished guests. Now entering the Dean of Atlanta's John Marshall Law School. Jace C. Gatewood. Welcome graduates, faculty, family, and friends to 2020 and 2021 commencement ceremony is now in order. Please stand for the national anthem by the Amadeus Quartet. Thank you. 
Next up, we will have the invocation by Reverend Dr. David Anthony Spencer, Jr. via video. Let us pray. Gracious God, we come to say thank you. Thank you for this moment we have to celebrate together in love. It is this day that we honor the commitment of these graduates. It has been a long and tumultuous period in time, but they made it. We thank you for the journey here at John Marshall Law School, a school committed to providing opportunity for legal education to both traditional and non-traditional students who show promise in making positive contributions to the profession, legal system, or society. We're grateful for these graduates and how they stayed the course and persevered through the horrendous challenges of life pandemic, financial, emotional, academic distress has forged them into the paths of greatness. Thank you for allowing them to see it through. Lord, we know that you have comforted them with a blanket of love by way of their family and friends. You have lifted them with the tenacity of faculty and held them up with grace, with the grace of the staff. We are inspired and challenged by Dean Gatewood continue to influence and guide him and the administration of this great institution. As we go into the ceremony of triumph, reflection, encouragement, and accountability, allow the words to fall fresh on them all and inscribe them on the tablets of their hearts. Lord, this is our prayer in the precious name of the one who does all things well. Amen. Good afternoon and welcome to the commencement ceremony of the class of 2020 and class of 2021. As we stand in the shadows of our brand new law school, just 18 floors above us, I am deeply honored by the opportunity to share this day with you. As you know, this day was a long time in the making, especially for the class of 2020 and it was in jeopardy of being postponed yet again for the class of 2021. By now, we are all aware of the devastating effects that COVID-19 has had on our community and the world. But there was an emotional toll as well. As schools began to shut down all across the country and the devastating loss of life continued to increase, students bore and bear the brunt of the emotional toll due to the effects of COVID-19. Graduations canceled, birthdays canceled, proms canceled. All the milestones and accomplishments that make the journey of being a student worthwhile were gone without warning and those dearest to us unable to bear witness. You see, we didn't have a chance to fully process what was happening or about to happen as COVID-19 began to control our lives. And we were wholly unprepared for both the physical and emotional effects of COVID-19. The emotional toll borne by students, especially the class of 2020, was and is enormous. That is what makes this day all the more special. Each of you looked the devil in the eye and said, not today, not on my watch. You being here today is a testimony of courage, resiliency, and determination. You being here today is a testimony of hope. Through all your diligent efforts and hard work, you have reached the threshold of your professional careers as attorneys at law. 
you made it. Despite COVID, despite social unrest and injustice, you made it. And I, and we should all applaud you. You know, however, it was not a journey made alone. Others were instrumental in each graduate success. At the top of the list are spouses, significant others, children, parents, and other family and friends who share this journey with you. So students, please take a moment to let each of the members of your support group know how very much you appreciate their support. Another group worthy of recognition is the faculty who guided you to this point. Faculty, faculty had no easy task. In many respects, their task as faculty, dealing with a pandemic and remote learning while navigating classroom discussions on social issues dealing with systemic racism was as selfless and heroic as each of yours. As we honor your accomplishments today, we honor our faculty too. Faculty, will you rise and be recognized? <laughs> and we cannot forget the many staff members that assist us every day to make your time here at Atlanta's John Marshall Law School mostly hassle-free. Without their efforts on your behalf, we could not accomplish the task of educating you. Will each staff member here today please stand and be recognized and thank you for your efforts. Now that we've recognized all those who had a hand in your being here today, Today is about you and what you've achieved through hard work, determination, and moments of creative inspiration. Graduation is a time to imagine your future and the world to come. When you think of the road ahead, you may gain perspective by looking back where you've been. Think about where you've been and know that you're still here. You're still standing and you're still strong despite it all. Take that knowledge and use it to make your future, to chart your own path and know that if you made it this far, you can make it all the way. Congratulations. <laughs> now let's turn our attention to recognizing the special accomplishments of some of our graduates, beginning with the class of 2020 and then the class of 2021. Each year, we honor some of our graduates with a number of awards. Each award recipient is selected by our faculty based upon criteria that embodies the award. As I call out the award in the name of the recipient, I would ask that the recipient stand and be recognized. In keeping with COVID safe practices, any actual awards will be handed out after the ceremony. As I start with the class of 2020, I acknowledge that many of the members of the class of 2020 are not here today. Hopefully they're off doing great things with their law degree that they earned last year. So to begin the Class of 2020 Commencement Awards. The first award is the National Association of Women Lawyers Outstanding Student. That award goes to Jessica Swartz Burton. <laughs> the next award, the Georgia Association of Women Lawyers Outstanding Graduate Award. That award goes to 
Tiana Overton. We have several recipients of the Pro Bono with Distinction Award. The first recipient is Paige Duncan. The next recipient is Ekram Ishmael. Next up is Fritis Romero. And the last recipient is Bryce Stevens. We also have the Excellence in Pro Bono Award with several recipients. The first is Catherine Emig. Next is Brianna Gresham. Next recipient is Chelsea Hinton. Next, Robert Leone. Next recipient is Sydney Marshall. And the last recipient for this award is Tracy Tripp. The next award is the Chief Justice Leah Ward Sears Pro Bono Award. The award recipient is Tiana Overton. Next, we have Atlanta's John Marshall Law School Award for Excellent in Appellate Advocacy. The award recipient is Kristen McKenzie. The next award is the Judge Harold R. Banky Advocacy Award. We have several recipients. The first is Jarrett Archer. Next, we have Bryce Bell. Next recipient is Hunter Burkhalter. Last recipient for this award is Melissa Fisher. The next award is the American Bankruptcy Institute Medal of Excellence. The award recipient is Sasha Robinson. Next, we have the Henning Award for the Atlanta Bar Association the dispute resolution section. That award goes to Chelsea Hinton. The next award is the Order of Quill. Each year, students based upon a certain GPA and a certain select group of courses are inducted into the Quill, the Order of the Quill. Thus far, we have two students that have been inducted into the quill. The first one is Jarrett Archer. The next one is Nicholas Pope. The last award for the class of 2020 is Atlanta's John Marshall Law School Outstanding Graduate Award selected by the faculty. We have one in both the full-time division and one in the part-time division. The full-time recipient is Sydney Marshall. The part-time recipient is Bianca Tarshi. Now for the class of 2021 commencement awards. The National Association of Women Lawyers Outstanding Student, Christian Postma. The 
Georgia Association of Women Lawyers Outstanding Graduate Award, Brittany Lenach. The Pro Bono Distinction Excellence in, uh, excuse me, the, the Pro Bono Distinction uh, and Excellence Award, I guess that's what it says. That goes to Yvette Hill. We have four recipients for the pro bono, for the excellence in pro bono award. First recipient is Morgan Iper. Next recipient is Ashley Lewis. The next recipient is Tyler White. And the last recipient for this award is Stacy Williams. <laughs> Next up, we have the Chief Justice Lee Award Sears Pro Bono Award. The recipient is Yvette Hill. <laughs> Next award is the Lannis John Marshall Law School Award for Excellence in Appellate Advocacy. The first recipient is Mandira Sethi. The next recipient is Zachary Warfell. The next award is the Henning Award for the Atlanta Bar Association Dispute Resolution Section. The recipient is Damilola Olatunde. And we had one inductee into the Order of Quill from the class of 2021, Mr. Charles Carr. Oh, oh, excuse me, we had a couple more, I'm sorry. My bad. We also have Morgan Iper, Honor Scholar and Marshal of the Order. And then there's Diana Franceschini, Scholar. I need glasses, I apologize. The last award is the Atlanta's John Marshall Law School Outstanding Graduate Award. The faculty had a difficult time with this award, and so we have a number of recipients, both in the full-time and part-time divisions. In the full-time uh, division, the first recipient is Morgan Iper. The other recipient for this reward in the full-time division is Marie Martin. And the part-time division was really close. We have five people. First up is Ashley Lewis. The next recipient for Outstanding Graduate Award for the part-time division is Promise Yarber. The next recipient for Outstanding Graduate for the part-time division is Matthew Rapella. Next up for Outstanding Graduate Award for the Part-Time Division, Miriam Perfecto. And the last recipient for this award is Megan Sale. Congratulations, everyone. Next coming up to introduce 
one of two Distinguished Alumni Awards is Associate Dean, Dr. Bridget Ortega. Hello, everyone. This is the quietest commencement I have ever attended for John Marshall. I want to congratulate you on your amazing achievement. As we celebrate this achievement, it's important to remember those that have gone before you. Atlanta's John Marshall Law School traditionally honors two alumni each year with a distinguished alumni award. This award is presented to alumni who have distinguished themselves in the profession of law and have generously shared their gifts and talents with the law school and soon to be graduates such as yourself. Their careers and their character serve as models for John Marshall Law School and the community. As you walk the halls of the law school, you passed many of them. People such as the former member of the Georgia State Senate and now Judge Ronald Ramsey Jr. Chief Judge G. Allen Blackburn, who the Blackburn Center is named after. Tavis Knighton, senior counsel at Uber. Tracy Benzo, Michael Moran, Judge Alvin T. Wong, Judge Sonia Brown, and the 1999 valedictorian, Mr. Adam Malone, and others have held this title. Greatness has and continues to grace the halls of Atlanta's John Marshall Law School. You should stand proud and never let anyone diminish or demean what you have accomplished or your school. Today, I have the privilege to present the first uh, Distinguished Alumni Award of 2021. He shares the same characteristics of leadership, progressive thinking, high standards, uncompromising integrity, commitment, courage, and confidence as all of the alumni aforementioned before. He truly, gotta get rid of this thing. <laughs> he truly exemplifies what it means to be the John Marshall proud. Mr. Corey Martin, AJMLS graduate of the class of 2009 and proud veteran of the United States Army has stepped up to the plate and providing hundreds of hours of pro bono service to address the unmet legal needs of homeless veterans through our Atlanta's John Marshall Homeless Hybrid Clinic at Fort McPherson. Much of this work can be categorized as poverty law. The work ranges from helping vets get their driver's licenses and identification, clearing warrants, child support matters, tracking down out of state cases, appearing in court on their behalf and a host of other legal services. This clinic is led by Mr. Corey Martin, the Veterans Justice Office and the legal externs from Atlanta's John Marshall Law School. In addition to the many hours he has dedicated to these vets every semester since I have been at the law school, and that's been a minute, y'all. Uh, Mr. Martin has been supervising and mentoring students from John Marshall Law School through our externship program teaching and providing practical experience in criminal and immigration law. He is inspirational, and every one of my students who have had the privilege to work with him for a semester or two comes out of that experience as a better aspiring attorney and a better person. Mr. Martin's work with these students helps them to graduate practice ready by honing and developing legal skills. And if that wasn't enough, he also serves as a member of the newly reconstituted Atlanta's John Marshall Law School Alumni Board. When John Marshall calls, Corey Martin answers the call with his time, his talent, and his treasure. The law firm of Corey Martin and Associates was the 2020 recipient of the State Bar of Georgia William B. Spann Jr. Award, a distinguished award given to a firm that has a civil pro bono program that extends services to underserved segments of the population. He is an outstanding lawyer, husband, father, and friend to us all. It is my honor to present the Distinguished Alumni Award, one of two, 
for 2021 to Mr. Corey Martin. Good afternoon, everyone. First, I have to thank God for ordering my steps and allowing me to have a purpose in life that lets me to speak up for the least of these. Thank you, Dean Gatewood, for your leadership at John Marshall Law School and for the committee that decided to give me this amazing award. It was Dean Ortega's vision of having an offender reentry program in a veterans legal clinic that has allowed me to represent our soldiers all throughout the state of Georgia in criminal misdemeanor proceedings. And we represent them pro bono. We represent our clients zealously as taught by the one and only best defense mind that I know, Professor Rapping. Woo! Thank you, Dean Ortega, for your vision and allowing me to be a part of that vision. To my beautiful wife, Shranita, who's here with me today, who keeps me grounded and humble. Thank you for your support. And thank you for recently making sure that I'm reminded that when certain songs come on, like Cardi B, Attorney Martin, no face, no case. <laughs> to my five awesome daughters, which one I have with me, the lovel lovely Sable, and with her sister Simone, they would spend their summers with me in court, seeing the things that would go on in court, good and bad. I said, thank you, and I love you for it. Thank you for being there to see that we have to fight for those that are overlooked, that are persecuted, that are injured, that are abandoned by a system that in so many instances could care less about fairness for all people. And that unfairness is why I love to get into good trouble, as John Lewis would say. My mom taught me that you never accomplish anything by yourself. And if someone tells you that you did, then they're lying. And so I stand today to also thank Ms. Cabinets at the VA, to Lana, Ebony, Angela, Ivor, Hassan, Michael, Tracy, Terry, Dallas, Angel, Carolina, Juliana, Jayla, Rico, Demarion, and Tiffany for your support. In closing class of 20 and 21, I challenge you to use this awesome legal skill set that you have to not only uplift yourself and your family, but to uplift those who also need your help that are less represented. For instance, take on a pro bono case where you can represent someone that has been arrested for protesting. Take on a pro bono case where you can represent someone in a child tribunal. And take on a pro bono case as my firm has vowed if in the next election, someone is arrested for giving someone water while standing in a long line. <laughs> Malcolm X once said that don't be so blind with patriotism that you can't see reality. Wrong is wrong no matter who does it or who says it. And so remember always as you go about your day to say their names, and their names are Ahmaud Arbery, Rashad Brooks, Trayvon Martin, Breonna Taylor, George Floyd, Freddie Gray, Michael Brown, Eric Garner, Sandra Brand, Philando Castile, Walter Scott, Alton Sterling, Dante Wright, Andrew Brown Jr., Adam Toledo, Matthew Williams, Ronald Green, and Ashley Carr. Thank you. I have the honor of introducing our next distinguished alumni award and commencement speaker, the Honorable Judge Angela Duncan.
Judge Angela D. Duncan is the newest Superior Court judge in the Gwinnett Judicial Circuit and was appointed by Governor Brian Kemp to fill the newly created 11th judge position. She earned a bachelor's degree in criminal justice from North Georgia College. She served in the U.S. Army Reserves from March 1987 to March 1995 as a lightweight vehicle mechanic. She later attended Atlanta's John Marshall Law School to obtain her law degree. Judge Duncan attended the law school part-time attending both day and evening classes while also maintaining a full-time job. Throughout her study, she sought to experience different areas of law by working at a different law firm each year of law school. She learned every aspect of private firms from working in the file room to becoming a law librarian assistant and court runner. She also experienced many different law practices prior to graduation from labor law and appellate work to personal injury and criminal defense. It was during her third year of study at Atlanta's John Marshall Law School and the work with a former Gambrell and Stoltz law firm that her interest was piqued in serving on the bench. Judge Erwin D. Stoltz Jr., who served on the Georgia Court of Appeals from 1972 to 1977, was an excellent mentor and teacher during her employment at the firm. While continuing her practice of law, Judge Duncan served as a judge in the cities of Shambly, Snellville, Doraville, and Norcross Municipal Courts, and as a part-time judge for the Magistrate Court in Gwinnett County before she was appointed as a full-time Magistrate Court judge in 2016. As a full-time Magistrate Court judge, she primarily presided over Superior Court matters by designation. She was the chief judge in the city of Shambly when Governor Kemp appointed her to the Superior Court bench in Gwinnett County. During her tenure serving as judge for multiple agency, Judge Duncan presided over complex litigations comprising of domestic, criminal, and civil matters, each time administering justice objectively with respect and dignity to all parties involved. Judge Duncan's knowledge, education, and experience, as well as the manner in which she conducts herself in any court proceeding she presides over, have made her an extremely respected and valued member of the Gwinnett legal community. Judge Duncan's passion for service is not just reserved for the legal system in Gwinnett County. When she's not presiding over court proceedings, she can be found out in the community participating and one of several outreach programs she is a member of, such as volunteering for the Veterans Center, Resource Center, and serving as a board member of the Gold Star Monument. Judge Duncan resides in Lawrenceville with her wife, Michelle, and children, Brody and Alex. I present to you, Judge Allen, Distinguished Alumni Award. Good afternoon. Oh, come on. Is everybody asleep already? Good afternoon. Good afternoon. There you go. All right. Um, I can't believe I'm standing here. Uh, 25 years ago, probably pretty close to this day, I was graduating from John Marshall Law School. And I... <laughs> Thank you the class of 1996, and to have thought at that time and in that moment that I would be invited back to be a commencement speaker for another graduation 
still even today blows my mind. Uh, it is a true honor to be here today. And students, I cannot help but say how proud I am of all of you, how much you've accomplished so far. And I know that you all will continue to pave your own way and build your own path down the road. So congratulations. <laughs> Dean Gatewood, faculty and staff, thank all of you so much for having me here today. It is a true honor. Um, I cannot go without thanking all the parents that are here today, all the family members that are here today, because I know well the sacrifices that you have made for your children to go through this process. So I wanna thank all of you guys. And of course, I'd like to thank my own parents. My dad is here today, Mr. Bruce Duncan. He practiced law for 46 years and took me under his wing. Uh, without my mom and dad's love and support, I would not be who I am or where I am without them. So thank you, Dad. Now, Dean Gatewood asked me to prepare a 90-minute lecture on wills and estates. So I'm gonna to talk to you about the rule of perpetuity. No? I'm up for it, let's go. Is that okay? I think I'm here on the wrong day. Um, to the class of 2021, you have achieved something incredibly already by making it through your courses and graduating from law school. Again, all of you have sacrificed your time, energy, family, and maybe a few tears to get here today. And for that alone, you should be congratulated. There are five things that I want you to walk away from here when you leave here today. Number one, the law is all about the people. Number two, don't be afraid to fail. And number three, be yourself, be an individual. Four, at least if you come in my courtroom, be prepared, be persistent, and be patient. And finally, give back. Marcus Tullius Cicero said, the good of the people is the greatest law. All of you have come here to law school for one reason or another. Whether you love property law, no, anyone? <laughs> or the UCC code, or if you have a passion for the law in general, the law cannot have any effect without the people. The law actually comes alive with the people. It is you. It is your client. It is the defendant, the opposing counsel, the judge, and everyone else. It's all about the people. I have found throughout my career, both as an attorney and a judge, that it is the people that make the law come alive. Remember, the preamble to the Constitution of the United States starts with, we the people. No matter what area of law you practice, it's about the people. Your clients, the people you meet, build relationships with them. Think of the friends and relationships that all of you have made while you've been at John Marshall. Those relationships will carry on and they will serve you well. You'll have somebody to call at three o'clock in the morning when you're worried about whether or not you remembered to file that brief or what it was supposed to say, and they will understand what you are going through. By the way, that's a true story. Um, reach out to members of the bar. Have a mentor. That will help you learn to lab navigate the legal world that you are in. It's about your coworkers and opposing counsel. And don't forget, this is about you. Not just today, but as you go forward. As they say, you can't, you have to put the oxygen mask on yourself before you put it on somebody else. As lawyers, 
we're, we're geared and we've been, you've been trained for the last four years to seek justice and to help other people. Don't forget to take care of yourself. As you move through your career, you're gonna meet incredible people. Some of them your clients, and those are the relationships that will live on on your memory long after you close their file. They will influence you, your practice, and your character. When I first um, started practicing law, I was with my dad for the first three years. And because I'm stubborn, I decided I had to go out on my own to prove that I could do it by myself. But he gave me that leg up. I started in Gwinnett County. I hung a sign outside the door and I started on the court appointed list doing um, misdemeanor public defender type work. One of my very first clients was a 17 year old kid charged with theft by receiving a license plate tag and he was in jail. It's ridiculous. Well, he insisted that he was innocent, that he had purchased the vehicle and the owner left the tag in the car. I was able to prove that. I got the charges thrown out and, the, and over the years, that same client came back to me over and over again for family issues. I got him custody of his three-year-old daughter. I helped him when his father passed away and on many, many other things. And today, he's one of my closest friends. He's 39 years old. That was 24 years ago. All right, whoever does math, don't count that. <laughs> something like that. He's one of my best friends. When something happens, I call him. And when something happens to him, he calls me. That's the kind of relationships I hope you build, whether they're professional or whether they're with your clients. Number two, don't be afraid to fail. President John F. Kennedy said, Every accomplishment starts with the decision to try, and those who dare to fail miserably can achieve greatly. Don't be afraid to fail, and don't be afraid to make mistakes. You will, we all do. It is not the failures or mistakes that will define who you are as an attorney, as a husband, as a wife, as a friend. It is how you recover from those mistakes that will define who you are. Remember, they do call it the practice of law, right? As you go through your practice, some of your best growth as an attorney will be when you make mistakes and when you lose a case. Now, I don't know about you guys, but I don't ever wanna hear that L word, okay? Um, I did not like to lose, but that's when I grew the most. Number three, be yourself. To be yourself in a world that is constantly trying to make you something else is a true accomplishment. And that is Ralph Waldo Emerson. Use your imagination. Don't take out the civil practice book and read it and go step by step. Use your imagination. My dad taught me the good mark of an attorney is to use your imagination and be who you are. Everything is not black and white. Your case strategy is up to you. How you present your case law, your witnesses, and your evidence, that's up to you. I challenge you to put your own spin on that and put your own personality into it. Don't be afraid to be different. It may be that difference that helps you or others be more successful. When I was at John Marshall Law School, I promise you, I was the only LGBTQ person there. And never ever did I think I would be invited back. Never ever did I think I would be featured at North Georgia College. And yet look at where we are today. That's how far our world has come. I challenge all of you to continue that journey and continue that 
level of change. Be prepared, be persistent, and be patient. Your integrity and level of preparedness will be known and marked by the judges in which you appear before. Be organized, and whatever you do, be honest. Who do you want to be as an attorney? How do you want to be known? Your level of, pre your level of prep I'm sorry, preparation, persistence, and patience will define your reputation, your case, and your client's success. I'm gonna give you secret judge tips. A, bring copies of your case law. Highlight what you want the judge to see. Bring an extra copy for opposing counsel. Just don't highlight theirs, okay? <laughs> Judges love trial notebooks. With everything all organized and tabbed, it helps them follow along. Give one to opposing counsel, but you don't have to tab it. It's all there. Be persistent. Return phone calls and emails. Have calendars and reminders. Call opposing counsel back. Call your clients back. Talk, talk, talk about the case. That's the only way you're gonna get the best information. And be patient. And this again comes from my father. He taught me when to shut up. Y'all want me to do that now, right? <laughs> okay. Um, listen to the judge. Know your judge. Know the court staff. A lot of times you will get a cue when you need to be quiet. Finally, give back. Give back. Number one, give time to yourself. Give time to yourself to relax and just be. Self-care is very, very important. I don't think I need to remind anyone what happened to the, one of our judges this past fall. Be there for each other. Give your time to your family. They sacrificed already and they will continue to sacrifice their time with you so that you can be who you are and successful. Give to your community. Pro bono cases, work at the animal shelter, the veterans group, go Army, um, your church and your charities. Because remember, it's all about the people. Thank you. Now we have reached the main event. No cheers. <laughs> we will have the announcement of graduates in the conferring of degrees. First, I would ask that the class of 2020 please rise to be announced.
Thomas Farmer. Kristen McKenzie. Congratulations. Ashley Brooke Mashburn. Thank you. Belinda Ramon. Chancity Robinson. I love you too, babe. <laughs> Christopher Smith. Shaki Smith. Tracy Elizabeth Tripp. <laughs> Sydney Tucker. Angel White. Dennis Woods. Twenty twenty one, please rise and be presented. Morgan Stone Iper. Miriam Perfecto. <laughs> Melissa Barrett. <laughs> Carla Vidal Barrios. Brina Danae Bates. <laughs> Glenisha Bellamy. <laughs> Charles Carr. Whitney Lachelle Carter. <laughs> Justin Kavanaugh. <laughs> Dr. Stephen Crabtree.
Jessica Montserrat Devins. Don Dixon. Bailey Farner. Kiara Flantroy. Gianna Francis Cheney. <laughs> Williametta Garnett. <laughs> Juliana Lozano Gehring. Reginald Anthony Jason Green II. <laughs> Daniel Guo. <laughs> Marta Habtamikael. Yvette Hill. <laughs> Delicia Horton. Donetric Houston. Shireen Highland. <laughs> Katherine Jenkins. <laughs> Jessica Jones. Sarah Khan. <laughs> Nicole Kim. <laughs> Delinia Anita King. Brittany Larkart. <laughs> Bryson Lax. <laughs> Brittany Lennox. Ashley Shadrika Lewis. <laughs> Ashley Lindsay. <laughs> Emery Lott. Adam Lowney. <laughs> Tessa Martin. <laughs> Ashley McDonald.
Cynthia McDonald. Dummy Lola Elizabeth Olatunde. Aristides Passes. Mario and Andres Prera. Christian Postma. Kel Randall. Jessica Ratliff. Imani Red. Renee Richardson. Megan Sale. Finally. <laughs> Cherie Sebro. Mahek Shah. Thomas Sizemore. Sunsere Quine Spears. Maham Syed. Renee Elaine Taylor. <laughs> Heather Thornburg. Mindy Thrash. Nicholas Vowell. Zachary Warfell. Tyler White. Christopher Williams. <laughs> Stacy Williams. <laughs> Victoria Williams. Justin Dillon Wills. <laughs> Promise Yvonne Yarber. <laughs> Crystal Yarbrough.
Vangelis Zafirulis. Now we will confer the degrees for the class of 2020, then the class of 2021. I will ask Dr. Markovich, the chairman of the board of directors of Atlanta's John Marshall Law School to join me at the podium. Dr. Markovich, I have the honor of presenting the candidates for Juris Doctor degrees for the class of 2020. They have completed the courses of study prescribed for them by the faculty and has successfully passed their examinations. On behalf of the faculty, I request that you confer upon each of them their degrees. This is my favorite thing to do in connection with the law school. Dean Gatewood, upon your recommendation, it is my privilege by the authority vested in me by the board of directors of Atlanta's John Marshall Law School and vested in them by the state of Georgia to confer upon these individuals the Juris Doctor degree with all rights, duties, and privileges appertaining thereto. Great, class Thanks. of 2020. <laughs> class of 2020, as is customary, please flip your sashes to signify your <laughs> <laughs> Now for the class of 2021. <laughs> Dr. Markovitz, I have the honor of presenting the candidates for Joris Doctor degrees for the class of 2021. They have completed the courses of study prescribed for them by the faculty and have successfully passed their examinations. On behalf of the faculty, I request that you confer upon them their degrees. Dean Gatewood, upon your recommendation, it is my privilege by the authority vested in me by the Board of Directors of Atlanta's John Marshall Law School and unto them by the state of Georgia to confer upon these individuals the Juris Doctor degree with all rights, duties, and privileges appertaining thereto. Thank you. Congratulations, everyone. <laughs> Class of 21, 2021, please flip your sashes signifying your graduation. Please be seated. Now we will hear from representatives of the day and evening classes to share their thoughts with their fellow graduates. We will hear remarks from the valedictorians of class of 2022, both in the part-time and full-time division. First up, the part-time division, the valedictorian, Mariam Perfecto. <laughs> Welcome all to the commencement ceremony of the 2020-2021 graduating class of Atlanta Sean Marshall Law School. First, I would like to give a big thank you to my father, Sergio, my mother, Juani, my brothers, Jesus and Sergio Jr., my sister-in-law, Nayeli, and her family, my nieces, Marely, Zule, Catarina, Amelia, my godparents, Carlos and Abril, and all of my friends who have all supported and guided me into becoming a better me. 
A very special shout out to my little sister and best friend, Erica Perfecto, who always knew what to say when it got rough and never let me give up. I would not be here without her. Thank you to the family and friends of my classmates who have joined us. A big thank you to all of our family and friends who could not be here, but are here with us in spirit. From my classmates and I, we thank you for sticking with us through not only our irritabilities, frustrations and failures, but our successes in law school. We appreciate everything that you have done from listening to giving advice to being our rock. These last three to four years have been an obstacle-filled, tear-infused voyage. A voyage full, full of so many words and letters of abbreviations and acronyms such as UCC, RAP, FRCP, FRE, that are stored in our memories for the long haul. Well, up until we need that space for some more knowledge. <laughs> but some letters in particular are burned into our memories and cannot be easily forgotten. These letters are IRAC. <laughs> The issue before us is whether we can become the attorneys at law we have always hoped to become from the moment we stepped into the classroom. Today, sorry, an attorney at law, as defined by Merriam-Webster, is a practitioner in a court of law who is legally qualified to prosecute and defend actions in such a court on another's behalf. However, we are not there yet. We have gotten over the first hurdle of graduating law school to now encounter the next biggest hurdle of our life the bar exam. We cannot relax. We need to put in those hours and work harder than we have ever worked before so that we can defend those that will need our help. This is for the ones that do not have a voice. We can give them that voice. All we need to do is cross the finish line. In conclusion, whenever you find yourself doubting how far you can go, just remember how far you have come. Remember everything you have faced, all the battles you have won, and all the fears you have overcome to reach today. Today means taking a stand against everyone who ever doubted you and thought you would never get through. Today means taking the next step forward to passing our bar exam, a feat we can all accomplish if we focus and work hard. Never give up and always remember that nothing worth having comes easy. Next, we will hear from our full-time division valedictorian, Morgan Iper. Good afternoon. Dean Gatewood, deans, professors, honorable judge Angela Duncan, friends, family, and most importantly, my fellow graduates. It's an honor to be standing next to each and every one of you today. Over the past three years, we've all been cold called on at least once in class, heart palpitations and knees trembling. There are legal concepts that still make our eyes twitch when mentioned like the rule against perpetuities. <laughs> I think it probably still makes some of the professor's eyes twitch as well. <laughs> and those of you in Professor Vendetta's contracts class probably still, <laughs> probably still have PTSD whenever someone mentions the name Lindsay Lohan. <laughs> We've all experienced a whirlwind of emotions. We've all had to face our own challenges and tribulations. We've had days filled, filled with anxiety and stress. Some days we needed a good laugh, others we needed a good cry, and maybe even a good drink or two. But as we navigated these uncharted waters, we not only overcame those challenges, but we found our passions, our voices, and our confidence to go out into this world as successful lawyers. We developed a thirst for the law. And most importantly, we found lifelong friendships among each other. This last year has been challenging to say the least, learning entirely in a virtual environment. 
but I had faith that we would all come out on the other side. We had the drive and determination to make our dreams a reality. And we've had the support of each other, our friends, family, and the professors and deans to help us along the way. I personally would like to thank my support system, my family, for believing in me and helping me these past three years. I truly would not be here without all of you. I'd also like to thank Professor Vendetta for instilling in me a passion for contracts that I did not know existed. You have truly been a wonderful mentor and I appreciate your wisdom and the knowledge that you have given me throughout law school. Thank you to Professor Dalton for being a wonderful legal writing professor and teaching me how to write like a lawyer, a tool that will be invaluable in my legal career. Thank you to Dean Barger for helping me review and edit my law review comment. Your willingness to take time out of your schedule is appreciated more than you know. And thank you to each and every professor here at John Marshall that has taken the time to teach us and support us throughout this journey. The passion that each of you have in the success of your students is truly unmatched. About a month ago, although I was excited to graduate, I kept looking at what was coming after graduation, and I found that it was going to be hard to celebrate when we still had such a stressful and momentous task ahead of us in July. I'm not going to say what it is, but we all know what it is. <laughs> Um, but when I had this thought, I was reminded by, of a quote by Madame Marie Curry. One never notices what has been done. One can only see what remains to be done. But I'm here to tell you, notice what you've done. We get to say we graduated law school. We have accomplished something spectacular. Bask in your accomplishment. Celebrate this moment with your loved ones. And then, Kick some ass in July. Congratulations to my fellow graduates. Just that quick, guess what you all are now? Alumni. <laughs> we will now hear remarks from the chairman of the alumni board, Randy Fry, class of 1999. I am so freaking exciting for all of y'all. <laughs> I remember. Uh, first of all, I was given the opportunity by Dean Gatewood and the others to offer brief remarks. I emphasize brief, so I'll keep them brief. Thank you for this opportunity. As Dean Gatewood said, my name is Randy Fry, owner of the Fry Law Firm here in Midtown, but most importantly, a proud 1999 graduate of John Marshall. This year, I was elected chair of the John Marshall Alumni Association, and we've got a lot of great th things in store, and I'm gonna spend about one minute telling you about that. One common theme that you've seen today, or I've heard today, and I'll blame it on Judge Duncan, is I have no heart issues, no anxiety issues. I guess that's why I enjoy being a trial lawyer. But as I sat back there and I heard the words, roll of perpetuities. <laughs> I'm living proof that if you don't, didn't understand it in law school, you didn't understand it at the bar, and you don't now, you'll be fine. <laughs> Again, on behalf of the entire board, the Early Alumni Association, we certainly congratulate the 2020 and 2021 classes. What do we do as the Alumni Association in general and the board is the leadership? Three primary areas. We try to connect and engage students and alumni within our profession. We work to find opportunities for our graduates by publicizing the great things many of you do and the quality of students that you have been and lawyers that you will be. 
and we work to find opportunities to give back to the community and service and help through others, which many, many of you already do, and we know that. And as we all know, karma is real. The future is bright for John Marshall, like we've never seen it before. We have bold, progressive leadership from Dean Gatewood. We have a committed and passionate alumni director in A.J. Doucette. We're in this amazing building. And I started out in the building probably with Judge Duncan. Way down, most of you don't know. Many of you may have not been born. But it was quite the difference. So the future of this school is great. And this is the first time I've been here to see these facilities today, and it's exciting. We hope you'll become engaged with the Alumni Association. We are here to help you, and we hope that you'll help those coming behind you. I think it's important for us to all remember, as has already been said today, so much of the credit goes to our family. Our mothers, our fathers, our sisters, our brothers, our significant others, and many times our dogs and cats. You know what I mean. I want to do a special shout out to somebody very special. After I, I've been practicing 21 years, and about 10 years ago, I decided to take the leap and start my own firm. I rented a small office up here in Midtown. I couldn't afford a window office, so it was an interior with a rented desk and a phone that for the first week, and I'm not kidding, I would pick it up 20 times a day to make sure it was, still was working. About a week or two into it, I started getting some cases and realized I already needed a little bit of help. So I met a young lady that started with me on week two of my firm, and we've now grown to a 16-person firm with 6,000 square foot of, of nice, nice space in the Buckhead Midtown area. And that lady is Juliana Goring, a graduate here. I tell people she must like me, she's still with me. And we plan on that long term, I assure you. I hope, or I wanna offer the opportunity for each and every one of you, and I mean this, that I'll, I'll help each and every one of you sit down with you, talk with you, whatever you need. Because it's all about meeting people. And, and you know, you come from a good school with a good reputation, but there are a lot of law students looking for jobs. So it's about meeting people, making connections, and that's what personally I will do, the board will do, and all of us uh, will seek to do. We hope finally that you'll make a commitment down the road to remember those coming behind you, remember what it was like as you were sitting out here, and that you'll hopefully help them as we move to the future. Again, to everybody, congratulations. And as my two-star Naval Admiral Father says, bravo, Zulu. Thank you. Many of you may not know Randy Fry, but many of you will know the student locker. At least I do. I've gotten many of chips out of that locker from time to time. <laughs> His law firm is the law firm that sponsors that student locker. So I wanted to give the audience a quick premiere of the rule against perpetuities because <laughs> so they understand what you are dealing with. So the rule is <laughs> no interest is good unless it must vest within a life and being plus 21 years. That's what they have to deal with. <laughs> <laughs> so now we will have the benediction 
via video. Let us pray. Thank you, God, for the words that have been imparted upon these graduates. May they take them and integrate them into their lives and practice. Now send them forth. Send them forth, O oh God. They were provided a rigorous, high-quality academic program. Send them forth. They have been given the highest sense of professionalism, ethical, and moral responsibility recognized by the legal profession. So send them forth. These graduates are now prepared to anticipate and adapt to the future developments in law. So send them forth. They've been offered academic support from diverse educational backgrounds. So send them forth. They have been challenged to engage and, and work with pro bono activities. So send them forth. We heard from the commencement speakers. So send them forth. Now, God, keep them in this academy of greatness. Keep these graduates practice ready, encompassing knowledge and research. May they remain professional, constantly aiding them in problem solving and allow them to be, allow them to be engaged and in tune to social responsibilities. So send them forth. Use this time, not only for celebration, but for restoration and reflection. May the graduates be compelled to assist those that follow them. And may the administration, faculty, and staff be given insight to further enhance this great program. Be with us and may the peace and grace go with us all. Amen. Well, this concludes the 2020-2021 commencement ceremony. As you know, the law school entered this year, 2021, as a 50C3 law school. This move gives us flexibility to provide better services and opportunities to our incoming and current students, as well as alumni. As part of this move, we also established the John Marshall Law School Foundation and hired a new chief development officer, Ms. Wendy Ina, who will help steer our fundraising efforts and provide more direct scholarships for our students. These efforts are already bearing fruit thanks to many of our alumni, friends, and staff that are donating to the foundation. As you go forth to change the world, I want you to I want to leave you with three words, connect, hire, give. Connect, stay connected with the law school. We want to hear from you and all the great things you're doing. This helps our current students see the great work that you as alumni are doing. Hire, hire our students when you have the opportunity create opportunities for uh, internships and externships if you can. Give, give back to our foundation so we can continue to attract top students and support our students by providing more scholarships. Connect, hire, give. Thank you. Please allow our graduates to exit which way are you exiting? The re exit the rear of the auditorium. Please exit to my left, your right of the auditorium. There will be a reception directly outside of the ballroom. We ask that you continue to practice social distancing, continue wearing your mask, and refrain from congregating outside the ballroom for extended periods of time. Thank you and God bless.